Welcome to Bible 180, Esther. The king of Persia, Xerxes, deposes the queen who would not come when he called her. He seeks to add pretty virgins to his harem, and Esther is one of them. Esther is a closeted Jew whose parents are dead, but her uncle Mordecai looks after her and advises her. Mordecai uncovers a plot by officers to assassinate the king, and he reports it, saving Xerxes' life. At the same time, Haman becomes the prime minister of Persia. However, Mordecai won't kneel before Haman. Haman's pride is stung, and he concocts a plan not only to kill Mordecai, but all the Jews. So he proposes an extermination of this uncooperative people, and the king gives it his royal rubber stamp of approval. A date is set for mass extermination. Mordecai gets wind of this. He pleads with Esther to plead with King Xerxes. Esther is reluctant. The last queen was dethroned for not obeying the king, and now she is to confront him? She's also not scheduled to see King Xerxes for some time, and the punishment for coming to the king unasked for is death, irrevocable only if the king pardons the intruder. Mordecai responds, who knows but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. Esther approaches the king, and Xerxes acknowledges her. Esther then asks to see him and Haman together at a feast the next day. Haman brags about his invitation, but he's still salty about Mordecai, so at his friend's advice, he builds a 75-foot high gallows to hang Mordecai on. At the feast, Esther begs the king to save her life and the life of her people. The king asks who would dare to threaten her, and she points at Haman. The king is furious, and Haman is hung from his own gallows. Upon Esther's request, Xerxes also revokes the extermination order. The enemies of the Jews are punished, and the story ends with feasting and rejoicing. One of the most powerful men in the kingdom, Haman, had plotted to destroy the Jewish nation. It looks like Esther will die along with the rest of God's people. But the royal king of heaven is more powerful and wise than any corrupt government or government official. The Jews are exalted and find themselves rejoicing when they had expected to be dying. Meanwhile, Haman becomes tangled up in his own plotting and gallows. Orphans don't always become queens, and yet Esther is a reluctant hero who plays her role masterfully, dealing with court intrigue and politics as if she'd been born to do so. Esther could whine, why me? Instead, she answers, why me? By taking advantage of her opportunity and interceding on behalf of God's people. So does Jesus. While he is anointed king early on, he soon faces opposition, and it seems as if hope will die with him. In fact, he is crucified and killed, but for such a time as this, Jesus has come. He comes to save his people. He intercedes and by doing so saves many. Though we could be crushed by our guilt, instead grace prevails and we rejoice at God's mighty and merciful provision through the anointed King of heaven, Jesus.